when your team is playing like that, uh, they're obviously playing with a lot of joy. I know people are having a lot of fun watching them. I, I noticed that you cracked a smile there towards the end. Um, when they're playing like this, and I, I would think that this is closer to the identity that, that you guys were searching for, um, how much joy do you have when you watch them? I, was I, I, was, I cracked a smile? I'm pretty sure you did. I'll go back and look at the tape, but I think, I think it happened behind the mask. Okay. I was going to ask that. I didn't know what you had behind the mask, but this is a fun group. Love coaching them. I love being their head coach. Um, they inspire me. I love the joy they play with, uh, the unselfishness, the spirit that they have. Even when things aren't going well, they have a, a calm spirit about themselves, uh, a positive spirit. Um, just proud of them. Just proud of them. I think they've done a heck of a job to this point. And uh, they're not satisfied. They want to do more. They want to be more. Uh, really proud of their growth. But uh, they're a joy to be around. Steve? Be, um, I, I was wondering, uh, you know, when LaMelo came out and you, you're doing all your scouting, I mean, I, the one maybe knock on him was, you know, can he shoot the three and, you know, the shooting form that he had. I mean, he's, uh, you know, over the last six games is 21 of 40 from three. Um was there any concerns about that and how surprised or or not surprised are you at how well he's shooting the ball from long range? There, there was concern on my part, you know, obviously watching him, not, not knowing the kid, not being around him to to evaluate. But, you know, when we get when we went to L.A. to to interview him and, and watch him, there was just a confidence about him in his shot. And I think, you know, as I sat there with Mitch, looked over him and said, he's going to be fine. You know, the, the kid oozes confidence. He believes it's going in. That's at least half the battle in this thing. Um, and he's going to continue that. He's fearless. He believes it's going in. He's going to continue to shoot it. Um, and I think I said that after we drafted him, that was one of my, you know, questions. Everybody was concerned about his shot. And um, in the end, he, he has great confidence in it, and he's going to keep getting reps and, you know, better shots as he goes. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good, that's a, it's a great weapon to have though. And it sets up a lot of his game. You know, he can get to the rim. I know he missed a lot of bunnies tonight. You know, he got to the rim. Most of those he finishes, but uh, really proud of his effort tonight. Let's go to Rod and then Rick. Hey, JB, benching in LaMelo's three pointers. He's shooting a lot of them deep behind the line. So when he's making them the way he is, like how does that help expand his game to open things up? Not only him, but I guess his teammates as well out there. Well, it's difficult on a defense. If he's going to make those shots, it's going to be difficult to, to stay in front of him. You know, it opens up the court for everybody. Um, you see that when ball handlers, point guards can step out and, and shoot it with range. And Devontae is one of those guys. You remember last year and even this year, he has that range to pull up. Uh, it just expands his game and opens up the floor for everybody. So, um, you know, I'm not sure where the respect level is for a shot yet. You know, every team's a little bit different with him. Um, but he'll continue to to prove that he can shoot it and he shoots it with confidence. The range, I would say, back to Steve's question, I guess the range he shot it with is really surprising. That The way he shoots it with ease from range, it's almost the same effortless shot, whether he's at the line or two feet behind the line. You know, it's almost effortless. effortless. Rick? JB, fourth quarter, the Rockets shoot two of nine, 19 score seven points. What what did you see going on with your defense to make life so miserable for them? Well, they, they're committed more than anything, Rick. I, think, I believe our group is committed to defending. And we're not perfect every night. We're not perfect every quarter. And look, Houston's a tough guard, and they're missing three very good players. They're going to be a handful for teams to guard. You can just see it. And we had a hard time in the first half. But I believe over time, we figure, we, we figure out our defense. And usually second halves, we clamp down. And we learn as we go. And we, we grow as we go. And we talk about it at halftime and third quarter. And we always say, Rick, our fourth quarter is going to be our best defensive quarter of the game. And tonight it was. And there was a pride about our defense there in the fourth quarter. Is there a tell? Is there something specific when you watch your team play defense where you say, if that's happening, everything will be okay? It's really the communication and the ball pressure. And, and overall, Rick, it's the effort, right? Just overall effort, number one. 
But if you're having great effort, you're communicating, and there's a physicality on the ball, there's pressure on the ball. If I see those two things, I know we have a good shot every night to guard. It doesn't mean they're not going to make shots. You know, teams in this league are going to—they're going to score, they're going to make shots. But if I if I if I see the effort that is is there, the ball pressure is there, and the communication, we're going to figure it out as the game goes. Thank you. Let's go to Sam and then Richard. Hey JB, congrats on the win. Felt like in the towards the end of that third quarter, too, you guys got a real big boost from Miles, Malik, and Biz, even to kind of really put this thing over the edge. What did you think of the way they were able to come in and not only kind of keep things where they're at, but really kind of pull the pull the game out? Yeah, you're right. That group really turned the game for us. And I got to put Caleb Martin in there. I thought he made the biggest play of the game. You know, the when he dove for that loose ball, got us an easy one that really ignited us. And I think the next possession or the second, you know, maybe the possession after, he gets the charge for us. And that's that type of effort, winning plays that really turns games. And and Biz did it with his his protection of the rim. Caleb did it. Those two guys were fantastic tonight. And, you know, I'll put Miles in there. I thought he was, again, effective for us on both ends of the floor. He's engaged defensively. He's talking. He's communicating. And uh, I thought Malik had a very mature game again today. You know, he he had a couple of turnovers there. He bounced right back. He didn't lose his cool. I mean, he just stayed poised and stayed with it. That group really turned the game for us. Thank you. Let's go to Richard and wrap up with Danny. Chris Brego, Richard Walker, uh, CarolinaSportsHub.com. You've talked a lot and you've been asked a lot about managing LaMelo and managing his minutes. Has everything gone as you anticipated? I mean, obviously, anytime it's a 19-year-old rookie, there's an element of it's a work in progress. But kind of talk about how you've been able to kind of navigate this crazy season and compacted season and, and get kind of – it seems to be the best out of it. Well, he, he deserves credit. You know, we're, we're managing him. I'm managing his minutes, his load. Um, obviously, our, our staff does a great job with him. And we all got our arms wrapped around him. More than anything, he's, he's reaching out his arms. He wants to be coached. He, he wants to be better. He wants to be great. And it's really that, that, uh, that curiosity, that drive to be great every single day is what I get a, a joy out of, you know, in being around him. Um, the minutes are just going to be the minutes. I, I don't have an answer there. I didn't have expectations going in saying X amount of minutes. I was, obviously, as I've said to, to this group before, you know, this is a 19-year-old that didn't play a whole lot last year. I didn't know what to expect. You know, he's coming to the NBA for the first time. He's going against grown men in the best, you know, basketball league in the, in the world. I didn't know what to expect. You know, I went in with, with open eyes, and I'm still, I'm still, still learning about him. Um, the minutes we're just going to have to figure out as we go. And it's, it is, you know, Richard, it's, it's a management of all these guys, including Mello. And he's, you know, this is a lot for him right now, but he's handling it with maturity and we're communicating, we're talking. And it's my job to make sure that he's getting the rest and the recovery that he needs uh, to be ready for the next game. All right. Last question for Danny. JB, Danny Thompson with a three point conversion. We all know what Melo brings to the table. He was bringing everything off the bench. Now that he's in the starting lineup, and Malik has now kind of taken that lead, that role off the bench. Do you feel like Malik is bringing that same type of energy that Lamella was bringing when he was uh, coming off the bench? Yeah, I do see energy by Malik. When he comes in the game, we don't miss a beat. You know, he picks up right where, you know, Melo, Tay, Terry left off. You know, he, get, he continues to push the pace. He puts pressure on the rim. Um, he's a shot maker and, you know, those are things, those are qualities we need off the bench. He can be a very explosive bench player and he's filling that role.